Okay. Uh, congratulations, Christian. Man, Thank you. you stepped it up to the plate and you Thank hit you a much. home run. <laughs> and I want to know how important is it, you know, having played this guy now for nine years, to keep having that evolution to make him change? How important was that to, in this one? It's, it's very important. You know, there's, there's a great character here, you know, and uh, so there's, uh, there's just nothing to be lazy about. There's, there's, there's a. There's a there's a boy, there's a man here who uh, has, has put his own life on hold, who's driven by this great pain and, and desire for revenge and uh, wish for purple, purposefulness, purposefulness and usefulness in his life. And, um, and so, uh, uh, you know, I always viewed him as being every bit as interesting as any of the villains uh, in any of the movies. Yeah, and you know, almost as damaged as them as well. Oh, very much so. He's a very damaged man. Uh, and of course, you know, working with Chris Nolan all these years, and I, I just, you know, amazes me every time I walk out of one of his films how he just keeps making them better and better. Do you still yeah, pinch yourself when you're working with this man? He's very good, isn't he? Yeah. What's no, it like to work next to him? He's, he's very, uh, you know, he's very confident. He's, he's been so. He hasn't changed uh, since uh, the first day that I met him. Um, you know, he's, he's always been uh, very efficient and clear about what it is that he wants. Um, and, uh, you know, and he gets it. Um, and his tea helps too, I'm sure. Oh yeah, you know about that. Yeah, I don't know how he takes so much of that. He just drinks it nonstop all day long. Yeah. <laughs> there was something about that Earl Grey. It must work. Yeah. <laughs> you have uh, you, Batman. Uh, Bruce Wayne goes up against some great people in this film. Let's first talk mm -hmm. about Anne Hathaway and your experience working with her and what you thought of her performance because I thought she was amazing. Uh, yeah. I, well, you know, I think that um, from the first time that I uh, read with her. Um, I turned to Chris afterwards, and I went. I think that you know, that's that's it, because um, because I recognized from being within the suit that, um, that that you had to have a reason for wearing these bizarre costumes. You know, you, you, in, in Chris's world, you had to make that mean something, and with. Um, you know, Bruce Wayne is because he feels monstrous, and so he creates this monster in order to channel that. And uh, and I found that with Anne, she was able in um, the scenes where she's not in her Catwoman costume to be very real and in keeping with the, um, the, the the atmosphere of Chris's movies. But then when she put it on, uh, that she was wearing it. She wasn't dominated by it. And you have to be able to do that, you know, without going over the top, without making it um, uh, uh, too. Uh, cartoonish. Um, uh, you had to be able to overcome uh, uh, the, the the clothes, the costume, and she, uh, she was very very able to do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, the fighter going against the warrior, Tom Hardy. My God, was he good in this? Uh, how did you guys just develop the, the fight scenes? You're both wearing these crazy masks. Right. You could probably not hear each other. Um, no, sure. And I, I was just, you know, watching. It was brilliant. It was. It could be a little tricky sometimes to hear hear each other, and uh, we we worked out little sort of signals uh, for each other. Um, but Tom's a really wonderful actor, and uh, he was uh, uh, always able to convey so much despite having you know so much of his face being covered. Um, and uh, you know, Chris costs very very well. Yeah, he certainly does. You know, he just has a knack for it. Um, you're. You know, Bruce Wayne, he's facing fears, Batman's facing fears, and, you know, you look back at your career, Christian, and, and the, the roles that you choose are always so fantastic, you're so good. Do you feel that with each role that you take on that you are, it makes you a stronger actor because you're facing fears with roles? I don't really think about it. Oh. I don't know. I think that's for other people to, you know, to observe. Okay, yeah, no, just because it's interesting how the stuff that you've, you've taken on, you just really, you know, you grasp them and you really well, thank take you. them on, and it's so fantastic. Um, working with uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Tom, tell me about him, because another yeah. amazing actor. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, uh, he, he, he uh, uh, plays a somewhat more quiet character, obviously, than, um, than Anne or, or Tom are playing uh, in this, but somebody who's, who's very important because um, he, uh, you know, when we, when we return to Bruce Wayne, um, at the beginning of this movie. Uh, he's somebody who has uh, lost all sense of purpose and of self. And it's very much um, uh, Joseph's, uh, Joe's uh, character, Blake, who um, inspires him uh, again. And he has all of the um, brashness of, of, uh, of youth. Um, and, uh, and that reminds uh, Bruce Wayne of, of who he used to be. Yeah. And uh, encourages him to, uh, to to step back up again. 
the scenes with Michael Caine. How did you get through them? Uh, it's always easier, Michael. You, you know, this, this is uh, the fourth movie that we've made together. And, uh, you know, he's a real pro. He's one of the best out there. And, um, you know, uh, when you're working with uh, people that you know well and uh, we know our characters very well, then uh, things happen actually very easily and very, uh, very uh, uh, smoothly, you know. And he's, he's, he's the heart of the uh, movie, really. You know, he's, he, he keeps uh, Bruce Wayne, Batman, uh, in check and uh, makes sure that he's staying on the right path. I didn't know I was going to need Kleenex for this one. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah, it's really. Yeah. Well, uh, Michael will do that, dear. Yeah, well, you, you know, too. Whether it's uh, uh, crying or laughing with yeah. Michael. Yeah. You know. um, and it just, you know, being able to put on that suit for the last time. Um, do you have a recollection of what that was like when you took off the cowl and everything the last time? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. We were in New York and. Um, uh, you know, like, like everything that you spend a lot of time with, it, 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 it becomes sort of a love-hate thing uh, because I spent so many hours sitting, you know, in it for seven months at a time for each each movie. Um, but uh, I was always honored to be able to wear it and uh, and to be able to, um, you know, inhabit this very iconic uh, character. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, these moments happen quite quietly, always on movies. It's just, hey, that's, that's, that's the end. That was the last shot. And uh, I just took a few minutes to myself to keep it on, realizing that was the last time it would be on. And, um, yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was a meaningful moment. You know, these movies have meant a great deal to me. Sure. Um, is it refreshing for you as an actor? You're now working with Terrence Malick, another brilliant director, of course, and to not talk about a movie, to be able to keep it secret. I have to say that for me, as a, just as an audience viewer, just as a fan going into this film, I love the fact that I knew nothing about it, and it just makes it so much better experience. It must be right. great for an actor not to have to talk about it. Um, yes. You can't embellish on that a little bit on how you I, feel I, about I just keeping secrets. I think that's about, about as clear as I can get. It's no, it's it's very nice not to have to talk about it. You know. Well, I'm glad uh, you're talking have, about have, it now. Have the movie speak for itself. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Again, you did such a great job. Thank you for Thank you. three spectacular Batman films. Thank you very much. And, uh, I look forward to what you have coming up next for us. Thanks so much. Thank you for sharing.